Every now and then, a show comes along that perplexes me, but for a good reason. In the case of the show that I'm reviewing this week, this confusion had nothing to do with any plot, details, or character decisions. It simply comes from a single thought about the quality of the show. And you thought there is never a girl online had no right to be as good as it was. I thought it was just going to be a simple guilty pleasure, a trashy show that would placate the most basic of my anime needs. Instead, I was surprised to find a show that had a lot of heart and an actual romance that was developed. It was also a decent look into the culture of an MMORPG without making fun of it. This series was one of my favorites from the spring season. I'm Banana Owns, and this is an Otaku Youth Anime Review. The story follows the party of Hideki Nishimura, known more commonly by his online tag Rusian. Rusian and his friends are obsessed with an MMORPG known as Legendary Age. A few years prior to the series, Rusian had a negative experience with online love that made him very cynical about the true identity of his online companions. Despite this, another player named Akko managed to convince Rusian to accept her in-game marriage proposal. He finally gets an opportunity to meet his guildmates in the real world and he is shocked to find out that they are all actually girls. And and attend the same high school as he does. From this initial setup, the series places a larger focus on the group's attempts to acclimate Akko to the real world, while also exploring Rusian's very real feelings for his in-game wife. Naturally, the series places these characters in a variety of typical high school situations that can be a bit generic. You have a beach episode and an episode about a culture festival, but these are much more entertaining because of the dynamic between Rusian and Akko. Any anime that pairs up characters right away immediately piques my interest. Rusian and Akko form a relationship early on and the series places a large focus on this aspect. So the generic high school plot lines are enhanced as Rusian and Akko go through these normal high school experiences for the first time. It's important to remember that both of these characters are otakus, so this is relatively new territory for them, especially for Akko. The series expertly places a large amount of focus on Rusian and Akko. This makes the story truly adorable and highly enjoyable. All of the characters possess certain quirks, but the two standouts are the romantic leads. Akko and Rusian give this show that extra amount of charm, so let's take a look at both of them. Akko initially appears to be absolutely insane. She has a hard time differentiating between the real world and the game world. Akko is a shut-in that lacks a lot of real world interactions. Even her gaming life was characterized by a period of loneliness before she met her current party. Considering how she initially only knew her friends in the game, it was no surprise that well, she preferred that world. However, once they started hanging out in the real world, this aspect of her character diminished quite a bit. It's also refreshing to see a character with very genuine feelings for another. She loves Rusian for accepting who she was, and despite her clumsy nature, Rusian always remains by her side. Rushian is one of the most dependable main characters in this genre of anime. He's a proud otaku and is highly intelligent. I also love how he avoids the dense protagonist trope. Rushian is actually a very self-aware character. He realizes his feelings for Akko relatively early on despite being initially hesitant. He's actually a very normal character for an otaku archetype. He really shines in his interactions with Akko. When dealing with her more crazy tendencies, he can be very blunt with not putting up with her shenanigans. However, at the same time, he goes out of his way to help her at almost every opportunity. Looking at it this way, Akko and Rushian complement each other quite well in terms of personality. The show puts this relationship at the forefront, which was a very smart move. The interaction between these two characters really make this show special. While this series will certainly not be considered a standout in terms of animation quality, it excels in a stylistic sense. Earlier I mentioned how this show is adorable. The stylistic choices present this tone perfectly. Everything about this anime is very bright and peppy. It makes everything pleasurable to look at despite the rather mediocre animation. The 2D representation of the game adds on to this rather cheery tone as well. It's rather enjoyable to see the extra detail of a 16-bit art design, and it adds on to just how crazy these characters are about gaming. The show visualizes the characters as their in-game avatars, and these scenes typically have a large jump in animation quality. It manages to broaden the overall animation by introducing new environments and even some action sequences that take place in-game. The highlight of the animation, though, is the character design. These characters are all designed in a way that makes each one stand out. For 
instance, Akko's rather timid nature is shown by having her bangs cover her eyes at certain points. Little details like this add extra depth to the characters. I suppose I also should mention that this show has a lot of fan service. The characters were originally designed by a hentai artist, and it can show at times. With the proper context though, I feel like most of these scenes are not too gratuitous, and some can actually be rather hilarious. The sound design doesn't have any aspects that really stand out besides the voice acting. The voice acting is perfect for this series. Akko's voice actress managed to capture her highly variable personality. This is also true for the rest of the cast. The full work for the game is also acceptable. It's not amazing, but it works for the series as the action is not the real focus here. The soundtrack is highly generic and forgettable. I suppose this aspect is perfectly shown through the typical opening song. However, there is nothing with the sound design that I would consider to be detrimental to the show. It is very obvious that this show managed to exceed all of my expectations. I expected a guilty pleasure, but the show was so much more than that. It was mostly a romantic comedy with two great leads, and most importantly, it actually had a heart. The animation was average, but the character design was astounding. The music was generic, but the voice acting was great. There are a few faults, but the overall package is excellent. I give And You Thought There Is Never A Girl Online my banana own stamp of approval. I would say that it was my second favorite show of the season. I'll be back next week for another review, and thanks for checking this one out.